what's up, hustlers? Check in, check in. Uh, I want to go ahead and get into this, and then we can address any questions, comments, concerns, uh, or anything like that that people may have as they trickle in at the end. If you're catching this video after the fact, put your questions, comments, or concerns in the comment section down below. Uh, what I want to talk to you about in this video is how to start when you have nothing, right? But before we get into uh, my tips or whatever you want to call it to help you when you have nothing. This is what I want you to understand is how I define nothing is this. Anybody out there, if you have a, a situation where you're working a job, but you can't consistently save money, you're just living check to check to get by. Even worse than that, if you're somebody who's working a lot, but you still got to borrow money from time to time to make any to help out with this bill or that bill. Or I think the biggest kicker that people will uh, disagree with is I'm also talking to anybody out there that has less than $10,000 saved up right now. So when I talk about how to start with nothing, I'm talking to all of those people and anybody that has less than that, right? The reason why I'm encompassing all of those people to include anybody that has $10,000 or less in the group of people that have nothing is because I feel like psychologically, uh, somewhere along the line, a lot of us, and when I say us, I'm not making this a race thing. I'm just talking about a lot of people who were brought up in a low class situation, right? So a lot of us have been programmed that uh, ten thousand dollars is an astronomical amount of number. Uh, is an astronomical amount of money. Excuse me. And I found out that when talking to people, they really like believe that in their heart of hearts. Um, my approach to this is this: before we actually get into the nitty gritty details, is I feel that along the lines, I don't know exactly where. I'm not going to act like I know exactly where this happened, but um, we were trained. Again, I say we because it includes myself that uh, that this is a lot of money and that we'll never get past this situation. Uh, metaphorically speaking, I relate this to anybody out there who's ever wanted to lose weight and a, a tip that's very common when it's time to lose weight or get in better shape. Uh, people will say drink more water. Uh, it's good to have more water in your system for a lot of different reasons. But one of the added bonuses is that it makes you feel full. Uh, also, that's why sometimes you'll hear somebody that's telling you uh, drink protein shakes because protein shakes make you feel full without necessarily putting more calories uh, in your body, right? And the reason why I'm, I'm talking about this stuff to tie it back in is that I think that uh, that same mentality is what is imposed on us to say that the more that I can make you feel like you have something or something is out of reach for you, the more I can make you understand or have the desire that you don't need anything else, right? I never have to tell you to move out of the projects, no diss to anybody who lives in public housing or anything like that. That's where I come from, right? But I never have to tell any of you to never move out of the projects if I want you to stay in the projects. All I have to do is make public housing so easy for you that you'll do it yourself. You'll say, okay, I could stay here in the projects or I'll have to go get a full-time job work 40 hours a week, and then my rent or mortgage will be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month. So I feel like, again, I'm not saying that I know exactly where this comes from, but I know it affects a lot of us. And I want to try to talk to you guys today in a respectful manner, just have this dialogue with you about how really lots of us have nothing, right? And I want to talk to all of us about how we can get more than this, right? So uh, again, I think that the feeling is the more that they can make us, again, for the benefit of the people that just tuned in, appreciate all 46 of y'all. Hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching this from. When I say us, this is not a race thing. If This is not that kind of channel. I'm talking about anybody that was raised in a low income situation or even a middle class situation where we were taught certain things that uh, we adopted to be true even though it's not necessarily true, right? So now let's get into this whole breakdown. If you're new to the chat, put any questions, comments, concerns you have uh, off to the side. I'll get to it at the end of this chat. My first tip to anybody, if you're in any of these situations, is you got to take time to learn the skills that make money in the open market 
not just the job market, right? One more housekeeping note. You see me look over here. Lots of you guys already know I'm really big on reading and writing stuff down so I don't forget. So that's what I'm looking at over there. But you have to take the time to learn skills that are going to make you money in the open market, not just the job market. Give me an example of that, JT. No problem, right? In the open market, knowing how to fix stuff is a skill that you can utilize anywhere you go. On this channel, we push cell phone repair and other tech repairs coming here soon because the way that the world is going, people are running six figure, seven figure plus businesses straight off of their phone. People are living off of their phone, right? So learning how to fix a mobile device is a skill. Also with appliances, right? Every home that you pass has some sort of appliance in it and people really depend on those appliances, right? But whatever skill it is that you want to learn, if you learn how to fix something that people care about, right? Emphasis on that. If you learn how to fix bird houses, that might be cool to do, but I'm not saying you're going to make a lot of money doing that. So really find something, a skill that you really like doing. And one thing can be fixing something that people actually care about. Other than that, something that I personally have gravitated to uh, this year, and I'm actually building a whole company around, is learn how to do marketing and sales. No matter what business, small, large, Fortune 500 company or startup, uh, that's out there, right? That our economy depends on. They all want to have customers that they can market to and increase their sales. So if you're not somebody that's good with your hands, maybe you you say, okay, I like this whole digital doing stuff on social media, SEO, PPC, whatever it is, stuff like that. I want to learn marketing and sales or believe it or not, entertainment is a huge industry. So while you're on Instagram or Facebook or whatever the case may be, and you see these people with a million followers, a million subscribers, and you think they're just making uh, free videos to make you laugh, these people are making money off of that. They're getting sponsorships and things of that nature as well to go along with it. But the, the main point, the initial point that I'm going to start you off with is take the time to learn skills that make you an asset to the open market, like marketing and sales, how to fix something that people care about, or uh, entertaining people, right? People will pay money to laugh, to be scared, whatever kind of entertainment value you can provide them, not just the job market, right? Lots of times we get tunnel vision and we only focus on, okay, if somebody orders a number one, what need to be on this sandwich, right? And I'm just using that as, a, as an example because I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that metaphorically. Second thing I want to touch on is stop asking for something for nothing, right? There's a lot of people who message me. They probably reach out to you. They might be your family members and friends as well that they'll just ask you, can I have a couple of dollars? Will you do this for me? Whatever the case may be. Right. So if you're somebody that has nothing and you're trying to build up, I want you to understand that you got to stop asking for something for nothing or asking for something for nothing. I want I'll give you a perfect example of this. Right. Got on the Oreos jersey, lived in Maryland, love Maryland uh, when it's not wintertime. I love Maryland. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of panhandlers up that way. Right. So uh, sometimes these people might want to wash your windows or whatever it is to get a couple of extra dollars. Uh, and I know that that is probably beyond the point that many people that watch this video will gravitate to. Uh, however, the whole point is, if you want to get money, get attention, get whatever it is from somebody, just asking for something for nothing is not going to benefit you because human nature in its most natural form is selfish, right? It, it has to be a value exchange. Even if you go back and say, okay, well, people in the church will just give out free food or whatever, or whatever the case may be. Or there are some good people in the world that'll just stop and give a homeless person $50, right? It doesn't have to be that you directly will give them something in the future. They could just believe that they'll be blessed from it. There'll be karma from it or something like that, right? Um, but you got to also understand that if you're playing that game, usually you're dealing with people at either extreme, right? You're dealing with people who are uh, super faith-based, they believe in karma, things of that nature, or you might be dealing with people who uh, just get an ego boost off of that, saying that I could do this, I got so much money that I could give somebody this, and it don't even bother me. A lot of people are in the middle where they feel like they're trying to figure it out just like you, so you going up there asking uh, something for nothing, and they saying, man, I got to get up and go to work and get it every day, 
the chances of you being successful with that is not going to really help you long term. Right. So moving on. Next thing I want to touch on is you got to network with people. I personally recommend you network with people who are five steps ahead of you. But I, at any event, network with people that are ahead of you. Right. Uh, the reason why I say five steps ahead of you and you don't got to adopt uh, that mentality at all. Right. But um, you can see your next level or most people can see their next level. Right. However, you might not have any idea how you're going to go from making thirty to forty thousand dollars a year all the way up to six figures a year, right? However, there's a lot of people that make six figures. Uh, it's going to come a time, realistically, if you're somebody out there that says, I want to make a million dollars, you're going to get to a point where your ideas are going to be viewed and laughed at uh, as insane by other people, right? The reason why I'm saying that is because if you do the math to make a million dollars in a year, on average, you made over $83,000 a month. To the average person, if you came out and said, this is my plan to make a million dollars in a year, I'm going to make 80 something thousand dollars a month doing this. They're going to say that's crazy. How are you going to do that? Especially if you're somebody who's never done it before. Right. So if you want to get to that next level, I recommend that you network with people who are levels of head of where you're trying to go, because maybe they can fill in some of those blanks for you. So you can say, OK, I'm at 30, 40,000. I want to make a hundred thousand dollars. I don't really know what to do, but I'm going to network with people that's already there and maybe they'll definitely help me out fill in some of the blanks on how did they get from 30 to 40,000 to a hundred thousand dollars. Right. And uh, it, this was going to go back to the point that I touched on before this, right. That you got to give them value. You can't just come on, uh, you know, walk up to their office, up to their car or whatever the case may be and say, I like your car. What do you do for a living? Will you teach me how to do whatever, whatever, right? So that's not how it's going to get done. Moving on. This is going to be something else that I know is confrontational uh, from a lot of different people because I talk about it in real life all the time. So it's nothing new. I recommend if you're somebody that's starting with nothing, trying to become ultra successful, look at a job as a secondary income or a means to an end. I know most people that watch this video will say that their job is their primary source of income. They're looking to start a side business or a side hustle to make a little extra money, right? And I'm not, and I'm not telling you that you got to reverse this relationship immediately and have your business be your full-time income and have your job to be your secondary income, right? However, Everything starts with your mindset. So once you start thinking about this job as, OK, I'm not solely dependent on this job. If I don't have this job, I'm not going to starve to death. My kids aren't going to starve to death. Look at me. I'm 29 years old. I haven't had a job in five years. Um, personally, uh, and, and I said it multiple times on this channel. Right. My goal is to retire at 50 uh, on, and only keep doing anything after 50 if I really love whatever I'm doing at the age of 50 realistically with how things are going behind the scenes, uh, Mike Sneed, or depending on who you listen to, will say that I'm retired now. If everything works out that I'm planning on doing within the next nine to 12 months, by the time I'm in my mid thirties, whatever I'm doing at that point in life, it won't be for the money. It'll be just because I'm having fun, whether it's making YouTube videos or whatever I'm doing at that point in time. So the whole point that I'm making is, is start thinking about your job, even if it's your primary source of income, Right. This second, think about it as, OK, this is just a means to an end. What I mean by that is ask yourself on a daily basis, what skills am I learning here that I can go reapply somewhere in a business and make money off of? What money am I saving here, either saving directly in your pocket or saving through the form of benefits? So maybe they're paying for your benefits so you don't have to worry about paying for them right now. Or even beyond that, what relationships are you making while on that job, right? But don't make yourself solely dependent on a job because, like I always say, you're you're an asset on a job. And you're only an asset until you're not, whether that's 10 years from now or 30 years from now. And they can let you go in most states or at will uh, states so they can fire you for any reason. Even if you're in a union, I know people that were in unions. I know people who say that they were in a position where they felt like they couldn't be fired. They have great relationships. They do good work. 
but it just came down to profits at the end of the day. And at some point or another, they decided to let that person go just to increase profits, right? So don't confine yourself to the mentality of you can only make money with the job or you're solely dependent on the job. Moving on beyond that, it doesn't matter what you think it matters what the customers think is the next point that I want to get into. Appreciate all 91 people that's watching this live. Hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching this from. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, put it in the live chat. I'll get to it at the end is how we normally do it here on this channel. Uh, but the point that I'm making again is that it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what your customers think. I'm going to give you a specific example of this. Lots of times in these videos or even in life, I'll tell people, hey, hit me up on Instagram. Shoot me a message through social media so I don't forget. I rarely give out my email address, right? Because how the world works, and many of you can relate, I have a ton, 999 plus emails, right? Um, you're go You have a far greater chance of reaching me and most other people through social media in today's times, right? And that's just how it is. But even beyond that, most of your customers are on social media. So if you're somebody who says that I, I'm not on Instagram, I'm not really a social person, okay, cool. I'm not telling you to document your whole entire life and put your family up there and all of that stuff, but you can just make a business page and utilize that to reach your customers, right? So just because you don't like Facebook or Instagram, that doesn't mean that your customers don't like Facebook or Instagram. So why would you cut yourself off from reaching those people on the platform that they're on for hours a day just because you personally don't like Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or whatever it is, depending on where your customers are. So the point is, it doesn't matter what you like in the beginning, it matters what your customers think, right? You got to go to them wherever they are, provide them value, and then you can bring them to your website or wherever it is you're trying to bring them, right? Next point that I want to touch on as well, build a team with a common goal other than money, right? I get comments all the time on my old videos, and I'm going to give it uh, to the benefit of those people just don't know, uh, is that... um. I don't do everything myself. If you watch my old videos, I was jumping in and out of vans. Those people that have recently uh, subscribed to this channel have never, ever seen me jump out of vans unless you go back and watch old videos, right? The whole point that I'm making is that if you do a lot of stuff, which I encourage you to do, right, have multiple streams of income, you can do a lot of stuff without physically being the person that does it all. You don't have to be the person that responds back to every email drives every vehicle to make every delivery, teach every class, build every whatever, ship out every whatever it is that you're shipping out for your business. Build a competent team around you. And even deeper than that, build a team around you that has a common goal other than money. The reason why I say other than money, because money is important. Uh, we're not going to pretend that it's not. Um, if somebody is only with you because the amount of money that you're able to give them Next time some uh, somebody else comes along that can give them more money, then they're going to say, OK, I'm in it for the money. So I'm going to go over here because JT Hustles offered me more money than Mike Sneed or whoever else that they're currently with. So uh, and this is something that I personally struggle with. And I don't mind being transparent on this channel. I said it multiple times before. I don't like doing HR stuff. I don't like hiring people. I have no problem firing people. But I don't like hiring people uh, only because, well, not only because there's a lot of reasons, but mainly because I know what I'm going to bring to the table hustle wise. And I believe in, pay in paying people more than fair, right? More than fair for what they do. However, I expect them to perform at a higher level. Yeah, you'll hire some people and they'll just sit on the clock or they won't give you that 110% that you expect based off of how you treat them and how you pay them, right? But build your team is still a necessity. I had to come to terms with, I can't do everything myself, so I'm back out in it and utilizing other people to help me out. Build a team based off of more than money, right? Moving on, never have less than two income streams. If you're somebody out there who's starting with nothing, want to get to something, if you're working a job, right, and you're barely making ends meet, or if you don't have any job at all, right, and you're looking into getting a job or, or doing a side hustle, do both, 
right? Never have just one income stream, right? I don't care if you deliver newspapers and flip burgers, like it, it doesn't matter what other people think of you and things of that nature, right? Just keep multiple income streams coming in in case something ever happens to one, you still have a little money coming in, right? Appreciate all 106 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching this from, share this video with anybody you think it can help. I'm just trying to just talk to you guys about my advice to help anybody that's coming fr uh, from nothing or trying to start with nothing and get to a successful place, right? And for the benefit of the people that are here, when I say nothing, I'm not just talking about that person that just got out of jail after serving some time and now they don't have no place to stay. I'm talking about you. If you have less than a thousand dollars, less than ten thousand dollars, excuse me, you have less than ten thousand dollars saved up. I'm talking to you. If you're working a job but still got to borrow money to make ends meet, I'm talking to you. If you work in a job and can't save any money at all, right, I'm talking to you. Or if you're somebody that has anything less than that, right? And the reason why, if you missed the beginning of this video, you can rewatch it. But to quickly bring you guys up to speed is because I think that psychologically we were programmed that, okay, we can never reach this level. And the metaphor that I gave is that if somebody can make you feel that you have something, right? They don't even have to tell you what you don't have. They don't have to tell you not to pursue this. They can just make you feel that you have this and it automatically reduces your desire to have more, right? I don't have to tell you to move out of the projects. I just got to make it easy for you to get public housing. I don't got to tell you not to make so much money in life because then you start competing with me on this higher level as an entrepreneur. I just got to make it so easy for you to get food stamps and other public aid as long as you don't make so much money, right? So it's things like that that can deter you and they never have to tell you to get to the next level. They just got to make it so easy for you to stay at this level and the average person is going to stay where, stay where they at, right? Moving on. Don't listen to negativity. Waste time with time wasters or no people, right? Of course, negativity is an obvious one, right? I don't think anybody has ever said anything negative to me in real life. I don't know about you two, but in real life, nobody has ever like insulted me or came at me in a negative way who was more successful than me, if that makes sense, right? Because successful people understand that arguing doesn't really get stuff done. If you really dislike how somebody is operating on this level as an entrepreneur or whatever, and you really want to address it, right? People in power understand that you compete with them, right? So if you don't like that JT Hustles teaches people how to start a courier service with a cargo van and then later expand, you say they should want to start with trucks. You know that arguing with JT is not how we address that. You're going to go make your own YouTube channel and write your own books and do whatever it is. And that's just how successful people operate. So, if you're somebody that has never had that experience, just take it from me and then understand that super successful people, they don't waste time with negativity. They don't waste time with time wasters, meaning that if you're around people and y'all always just talk about what y'all going to do, but y'all never do it right. That can be toxic because you can get comfortable in that situation where you guys always talk about, yo, we going to do this to make money. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then nothing ever gets done. You could just jump from conversation to conversation. Nobody really ever gets to a point where they take action and you get comfortable in that and you become somebody that never takes action. And the last group of people is don't waste your time with no people. I said it before. If you're marketing something that you know has value and somebody says no because of price or whatever, you're targeting the wrong people. So instead of trying to convert that no person to a yes, just go find somebody that's in your correct target audience, ask them, right? Make sure they understand the value and you'll have far more success and less headache from those people. Next thing, mistakes lay the foundation of success by the lessons that they teach you. Too many times out there, people quit businesses because they didn't make money overnight, the first week, the first month. Honestly, when I first started, getting into e-commerce, I went like three or four months without making any money. I didn't know anything about it. I was just trying different stuff. I went four months straight buying products, posting it on my personal social media, 
uh, asking people to buy it, you know, doing everything the wrong way. I didn't know any better, but I stayed consistent for three to four months straight. And then I had to reevaluate and say, okay, I've been doing the same thing for this long and ain't nothing happened. Let me become a student of the game and see what are other people doing that's making money that I'm not. Right. And then once I did that, I started making sales in less than 30 days after that, been consistent with it all the way up until now, which is years later. Right. So don't quit just because you haven't made any money your first day, your first week. I know it's a lot of people on the Internet that say I made one hundred thousand dollars in the last 30 days. Right. Good for them if they're not lying to you, but still good for them if they are telling you the truth. That doesn't mean that you can't make a hundred thousand dollars just because you haven't made it in 30 days, right? So the mistakes that you make are gonna teach you lessons that's gonna lay the foundation so that you never make that same mistake twice, and then you're gonna learn from it and continue to grow, right? Because if you go four months like I did, kicking out money, giving out free stuff, trying to figure out marketing and how to get sales, you're gonna get frustrated. And lots of people would have gave up, right? You go four months running the business, you haven't turned a dime profit. But if I would have did that, I would have never got to this level where I'm to the point now where my e-commerce money alone can sustain, right? So don't give up, keep it going, right? Making money is a numbers game is another thing that I want to point out there too, right? The easiest way to make a million dollars is to ask everybody in the world for a dollar, right? What I mean by that is this. If you're trying to raise money from your target audience, right, and you're still not hitting whatever your numbers are, maybe you got to broaden your products and services for those people and target a wider audience, right? It's hard to make a million dollars when you're only trying to target one person, right? Unless that one person is Oprah, Tyler Perry, you know, some other uh, very rich person, Bill Gates, right, Donald Trump, somebody like that that you feel like, okay, yeah, they'll spend a million dollars, no problem. But for the vast majority of us, we're going to have more than one customer. It's going to be a numbers game. So you got to understand that when you're trying to increase sales, you're probably going to have to put more effort behind your marketing and just keep leads coming in, stay retargeting. And that's how you make more and more money uh, and scale up, right? In simplistic form. Of course, I go more in detail with that in other videos. Appreciate all 122 people that's here. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. Drop any questions, comments, concerns you have in the chat, right? A few more things that I'm going to run through the chat. Do it for more than money, right? If I would have done YouTube just for the money, I wouldn't be on YouTube at all right now, right? This is not my first YouTube channel. This is my second YouTube channel. You've never heard of my first YouTube channel because it did horrible, right? But if I would have said I'm gonna become a YouTuber because I see these YouTubers making millions of dollars a year and I want to make millions of dollars a year, once I started that first channel and it got nowhere by nowhere, I mean, I probably done it for a few months and had like 40 subscribers, right? Which is nothing. I get 10 times that much in a couple of days. Uh, sometimes on this channel, right? So you got to do it for more than money, right? Money is important. I'm not somebody up here that's going to say do it for free, right? We all understand the value of money as competent adults. However, have something deeper than that, right? So this YouTube channel does significantly better, right? And my other YouTube channel wasn't really trying to teach nobody how to make money online or be a courier or introduce them to any other entrepreneurially minded people I know, right? It was just a random try to make cool videos channel. And, you know, it just is what it is, right? Uh, that didn't work for me. Do it for more than money. That's going to sustain you in the early days when the money is not there. That's going to sustain you in the later days when you have so much money, you can stop doing it. And if there's no enjoyment out of it, you're going to quit doing it at that point, right? Always price your items based off of their value, not their, not your hunch. I've got several DMs from several different people on my Instagram. And this week alone, follow JT Hustles, spelled exactly like this YouTube channel's name is spelled. Uh, just asking me about just selling stuff, really, right? And I asked a common question amongst at least a dozen or more people who had similar questions. And it was, how are they determining their prices, right? And they were determining their prices 
not based off of the value or what these items are selling at. It's pretty much they're attaching their sentimental value to it. They're pricing it based off of what other people are pricing it at. They're pricing it just a hundred percent off of their hunch, right? Just thinking about, you know, this is what I think it should sell for with nothing to support that. And all of these people were having trouble with sales, right? When you want to price something, whatever your product or service is, price it based off of the value that you provide to the people, right? And then it's going to go into your ability to convey that value to people, right? So you can have something that's worth a million dollars. If nobody can understand what you're saying, you're not going to make anything off of it, even if you're trying to sell that item for a hundred dollars, right? So price items based off of their value and your ability to convey that value to your target audience, right? An example of putting all of this together is literally me. I work the job uh, from, I joined the Marine Corps straight out of high school. Uh, I was so young, my mom had to sign the papers. So at 17, I enlisted, got out around 22-ish, if I remember correctly, just did one enlistment, um, but signed the papers at 17, went off the boot camp months later. Uh, by the time I'm 22, I'm out, uh, went back to college, got in corporate America, working for Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, and then just saved up my money. And I didn't save up money thinking that I was going to become an entrepreneur one day. It was in the back of my mind. But what I'm saying is I wasn't just saving money saying I'm going to start a business. I was saving money just because I always thought it was a good idea to save money. And then when the opportunity presented itself, I was able to take advantage of it because I saved money. The whole point of it being that if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. And luck favors the prepared. I had an opportunity come my way. However, if I didn't have any money saved up so I could quit my job, take advantage of this opportunity until the money came in, I would have never been able to leave that situation, right? So definitely keep that in mind as well. I'm going to quickly run through this chat and I'm going to let you guys go. Appreciate your time, all 120 people that's here. Please share this video with anybody you know out there who's trying to start something and be successful from an entrepreneur standpoint or just in life. You can apply some of this stuff that we're talking about to just life in general. Uh, if they may, if they have less than $10,000 saved up, they work in a job, but they still got to ask for money to help pay the bills. The worst situation you could be at in life is having no time and no money. Something got to give, right? And I believe that time is a better asset than your money because if you give me enough time, I'll figure out how to make money, right? But if you give me money and take away my time, right, I don't know what my next move is going to be because I don't have any time to prepare my next move. Now I'm super dependent on whatever opportunity that you have put me in in order to sustain myself. And that's not a, a position that I want to be in. I don't like being super vulnerable to that. Right. And I encourage you to be the same way. Don't find yourself in a situation where uh, the system or whoever makes you feel like you have so much. And again, the, the running example I keep giving to try to drill it home, because I believe most people can relate to it, is what the government does, but it doesn't have to be the government. It could be an individual. But don't allow anything to make you feel like you have so much that you lose your desire to want more. So public housing is easy to come by. Food stamps is easy to come by and other assistance is easy to come by. I'm not saying anything is wrong with that. I was raised off of that. However, don't say that, OK, because I'm in public housing, I'm not going to have any motivation to try to get my money up to buy my own house one day so I can pass it on to my kids or get so much money that I don't qualify for food stamps. And now I got to buy my own food. Right. Don't let anything curve your determination or your ambition in life. And I feel like there's a lot of things that exist now that keep us in a box and, and have us thinking $10,000 is a lot of money. And if I ever get that, my life will be totally different. But if you're somebody that's on the path to be ultimately successful, you want to be wealthy, right? You'll find out $10,000 is no money at all. Like if you're trying to invest in real estate, if you're just trying to buy a new car, right? Go out there and try to buy the car of your dreams, with just $10,000 and you'll find out quickly it's not a lot of money or get sick, have your kids get sick, you know, heaven forbid, you'll find out that five figures you can run through really quickly. So uh, my goal is to hopefully motivate you to, you don't got to get there overnight, but get on the track to get there. What's good, fam? 
What's up, BK from the Rockies? Shout out Tiffany Jones. Fabulous Life 50, Memphis in the house. Shout out to Philly. Good evening to you, bro. Uh, Detroit, thanks always. Appreciate that spoken. So true. Hit that like button. Yeah, if you haven't done so already, please hit that like button. Shout out to Atlanta, D.C., Orlando, Florida. Baltimore in the building. Quincy, Florida. Florida, appreciate you, bro. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Definitely like the cell phone fixer idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the stuff that I push on this channel or, or is just the stuff that I know or the people that are around me know. But you can think broader than that, right? I, I'm giving you guys appliance repair, cell phone repair, making money online. Uh, there could be something else that I'm not even thinking of that interests you and you can make a ton of money doing it, right? You can pursue that. Uh, but I, the, the key takeaway is start identifying within yourself what skills do you have that make you an asset to the open market, not just your job market, right? And I'll tell you, knowing how to write a resume Unless you're going to be a resume writing business is not really a skill in the open market, right? How to do a great interview, unless you're going to train other people how to do that. And you could, right? There's literally businesses out there that are like staffing agencies or temp agencies, and they make six figures, seven figures and beyond. And they actually help people write resumes, uh, talk them through interviews, line them up with jobs, right? So if that's the approach you want to take, then take that. How if you're an individual and you're not thinking about that as a business that interests you, those aren't really skills that you can take to the open market, right? When you're out there in business trying to compete for customers, nobody really cares what your resume looks like. Nobody has ever asked me since I've been a full-time entrepreneur, right? What Can they see my, my last job resume, right? I got a master's degree. Nobody cares that I have a master's. I served in the Marine Corps. Honestly, nobody cares as far as like a business perspective doing the businesses that I've done. All they really cared about is the value that I provide. So, you know, it might be good in mentioning, OK, yeah, this guy got a little education. He served his country. However, ultimately, like I said, human nature is selfish. They want to know, OK, but can you provide me value? Right. So I don't care about all that other stuff. That's nice. But how can that benefit me? Right. So understand that you got to have skills that matter in the open market, not just the job market. That's when you get into, can I fix stuff that people care about? Can I do marketing and sales? Can I entertain people, right? Can I provide a service that people really care about? Things that, things of that nature. Fashion consultant, yo, Tallahassee, Florida. Hi, sir. I'm trying to start a locksmith business from my home, but I have no idea where to start. Could you help me please, right? Contact AAA and other companies like that, that hire contractors to do that kind of work in your area and just ask them their requirements and go from there. Right. Um, I had a video on my channel publicly for a small amount of time, but uh, it's, it's no longer public um, because the family asked me to take it down. But basically in a nutshell, you can just start there. They'll tell you what they require. They have no problem telling you what they require. And then you can go from there and decide if you want to get these insurances, these tools, whatever it is and move forward. I'm trying to start, I'm trying to decide, excuse me, what kind of online business will work out for me. Can you give me some advice? It really depends on what your interests are. Right? There's people out here, Kylie Jenner is making a ton of money off of like what, uh, accessories and makeup and things like that, right? Me personally, if I came out with the JT Hustles accessory and makeup line, I would make zero dollars. If anything, I'll lose money, right? So it's not like there's any cookie cutter one size fit all business for you. I would say just evaluate what your interests are and then say, okay, based off of what interests you, what of that uh, can provide value to the most people and then let that be your business, right? Um, or if you want to get off in reselling, right? I like reselling electronics, toys, shoes. That's not to say that those are the only things that resell will, right? But that's just personally what I like to do from a reseller standpoint, right? Or maybe you can offer a service. The, the honest answer though is, is that no, I don't know exactly what will work for you because what interests you may not interest me and vice versa. And you should definitely do something that matches your interests and your skill set, right? Um, hey, JT, New Jersey, shout out to Jersey. I'm sharing this. Appreciate that. Davida Jane Brown. Uh, how do you network with them, right? So 
Uh, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you might have seen how me and Mike met, but I'm going to explain it briefly for the benefit of the people that don't know, right? I was a YouTuber with maybe 20 something thousand subscribers and I was telling people, and it's still the policy today, I put it out there multiple times on my channel. If you're a legitimate entrepreneur that doesn't mind putting out information to help people, contact me on one of my social medias. I'm JT Hustles Everywhere. And we'll look into bringing you on the channel and just helping more people because I don't know everything. And that's still my policy today. Any legitimate entrepreneur who's just trying to come here and just give game to help people, I'm more than happy to bring them on, right? I'm not going to just bring somebody on that just wants to try to sell everybody that's watching this channel something and just say, okay, since you got this attention, give me your cosign. But anybody that's willing to come up here, say, here's some free game, go make money with it. I'm willing to give them a shot, right? So back to the story, that's what Mike did. Mike reached out to me on social media. He said, man, hey, I'm in North Carolina as well. I'm teaching kids entrepreneurship. Immediately, I thought that that was dope to see a gentleman out here. He was actually, not only was he teaching entrepreneurship to high school kids for free, he was paying them, right? So I went there and I'm answering the question, uh, how do you network with people who are uh, steps ahead of you? At this point in time, I really didn't know how successful Mike was as an entrepreneur. He didn't know how successful I was as an entrepreneur, right? We were just two people who literally met through social media. So I said, okay, I, I took a day, I drove up just to check him out, see what he was doing. And he was the real deal, right? He had a legitimate six figure plus business and he was paying high school kids to learn a skill that will make them money for life, right? So we did a few videos together on the channel and it was it was a value exchange, right? So that's how me and Mike network, right? Behind the scenes, Mike taught me about business and let me shadow him when he go to his meetings with multi-million dollar people and, and real estate properties and things of that nature. And I learned skills that I can apply to what I have going on as an entrepreneur. And I put him on the YouTube channel so that he can continue to help people. And from that, uh, Appliance Bootcamp was born and now it's scaled up to the level it's in now. So in simplistic terms, if you want to network with somebody that is on a higher level than you, give them value, right? The value that Mike gave me in the beginning was YouTube content, right? I'm a YouTuber amongst other things. I thought it would be a good video to highlight a gentleman who's paying high school kids to learn entrepreneurship because I never heard of anybody paying somebody money to learn entrepreneurship. If anything, you would pay them or something like that. So I got YouTube content. He got, you know, a, a scene by my 20 something thousand subscribers that I had at the time. And we just went from there. I'm a drafter and designer AutoCAD trying to figure out how to do that on the side. If anyone could help me get started or would like to team up, let's do it. So good networking going on in the chat. Uh, I took CAD in high school. I loved the whole design. I wasn't, we didn't go super technical with it in high school though, but um, I like that. Uh, I know how to do it just a little bit. I'm going to jump over the networking, but feel free. You guys to network with one another in the chat. Shout out to Baton Rouge, dropping gems. Appreciate that. Haven't worked a job since 2012, right? Shout out to you, Davida Jane Brown. So it's real people, not just me, not just Mike, but there's real people out here uh, that have not worked a job for years and, and they're not hurting, right? Like uh, every day, you know, I have my own itinerary of what I want to accomplish in that day, of course, because I want to be productive and keep things going and bring up my daughter to be super successful. However, there is nobody telling us what to do, what time to wake up, what uniform to wear and all of that structure. And we're still successful. Right. So if we can do it, so can you no matter where you are in life. Not saying you got to quit your job today, but understand that it is 100 percent possible. 100% possible. Like, share, and or subscribe if you're enjoying the discussion. Please do so if you don't mind. Charlotte, North Carolina here, brother. Your whole theme and concept is rare and genuine. Truly enjoy watching. Peace. Appreciate that. I uh, appreciate you dropping the link there. BK from the Rockies. Shout out to South Carolina. Cali, North Carolina. Phoenix, Arizona. I liked and shared. Um, let me see. I agree. That's where you going in. Hit that. Appreciate y'all. Kansas City. 
Uh, that's where I am now. I retired from the Air Force Reserves at 49. Congratulations, man. Appreciate your service. With 30 years and retired from retail after 21 years. Have not worked a real job in almost two years loving my side hustles. So appreciate you giving that testimony, man. It's people out here that definitely are out here. I quit my job at 24 and I didn't know where it was going to take me. Like, so to most people, what I did was crazy, right? It made no sense to be 24 years old working a quote unquote good job, right? I'm working for Warren Buffett. Most people know who that is and his company and they, they pay you well. You get bonuses, base pay. They let you travel, pay you money to travel. However, right, I just wanted more out of life. So you got to get to the point where you accept that, hey, where I am right now isn't where I have to stay. I don't care if you're doing good or bad in life. You can always get more out of life if that's what you desire. Right. Um, what's the update on the food truck? That's a venture that I'm trying to do with my brother. My brother is the, the cook in the family and the expert in that area. So um, I went and looked at and I made the whole video on the trailers. We're trying to now do research on the trucks and just uh, compare the value there and then decide, you know, if we're going to move forward. Um, I want to do hot food. Um, some people disagree, not just him, but other people that might be investing in stuff too. So um, it's still up in the air, honestly. We, we're trying to work it out uh, behind the scenes, but we haven't gave up on it. But it's not just me doing it. So um, I just got to, I, I, if it was at my pace, we would be, you know, super far along. But sometimes you, you got to uh, let the turtle win the race. Yep, preach, show your love. Appreciate that, Miss Curly Girl Murray. Shout out to Indianapolis, Minneapolis, North Carolina, deep in here. Uh, comment where you watching this from? Yep, shout out to Chicago, Knoxville, Georgia. Uh, what's the best cargo insurance provider? Again, whoever gives you the best rates, right? Uh, usually, whoever if you've been uh getting insurance for somebody for a long time, they might give you a better rate or a multi vehicle uh rate. So, there is no the best, uh, just like there is no such thing as the best business, right. There's uh there's people that's making millions of dollars in tech. You might get in the tech and suck at it, right? I know people who cut hair for a living and have great lives, multiple barbershops, and you might say that's horrible. You don't even have an interest in that. So there there is no cookie cutter or perfect this or that, right? Um, I think that whatever your interests are, you find what value is there that can benefit the most people, and that is the best for you. Honestly, shout out to uh Yaniko Africa. Charlotte is here. Facts. Uh he ain't gravitate to successful positive people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I try to talk to somebody who is more successful than me at least once a day. And by successful, you don't have to always measure success in dollars. I know as a tendency, many of us we say, okay, I want to talk to so and so because he got more money than me. However, there's people that are super happy, right? They might not be filthy rich, but they're not poor either. They have a comfortable amount of money and they're the ultimate level of happiness, right? So you could just talk to somebody that's on that level and just try to understand, you know, how do you get this level of peace and happiness and you're not stressed out about anything? Because a lot of us are just stressed out about stuff. And if you get around people uh, you'll find out that they don't even stress out about stuff, right? The the whole time I've known Mike, uh, I'm not saying that he doesn't get stressed. I'm saying I've never seen him stress out about anything uh, at all, right? And then there's a lot of people in the world. My uncle is the same way, right? He got robbed at gunpoint while I was on the phone with him and his the tone of his voice didn't change. He went and got a new phone, deactivated all his debit cards, called me back. And my aunt had to tell me he got robbed that day. There are some people that are just so super happy in life that nothing gets them down, right? So I personally try to talk to at least one person every day that's more successful than me. We don't always talk about business or their success. It's just that energy that they give off that can benefit you. And you could try to incorporate that in your lifestyle. And I find that, that I have grown as a person because of that, right? Um, appreciate your wisdom. JT Hustles, I was curious if you have any information about being a TSA document courier. That's my current hustle. 
but it feels really niche. I'm looking to expand, but it feels impossible, right? Uh, I've never, honestly, I've never been a courier for TSA, so I, I don't know about it. And I'm gonna be real with you. I ain't gonna try to, you know, lead you alone uh, about something I don't know about. So no, I don't know about um, a TSA courier, right? There's a lot of different couriers. There's people out here that are diamond couriers, pet couriers and all this other stuff. Right. But uh, I mostly did pharmaceuticals and mail. Right. I dabbled in a lot of different stuff, but mostly I did pharmaceuticals and mail. And uh, I don't think I ever delivered for the TSA. Um, how did you get the truck with little to no startup capital? I didn't. I worked my butt off and saved up money and got it that way. That's another thing, too. I think a lot of people uh, there's so many people making content and selling people dreams that, hey, you can go do this stuff for free, right? I mean, if you got good credit, there may be a bank that will loan you the money and you can get it like that, right? But for the vast majority of us, you got to hustle and get it. It is no, this how you can easily get this with little money, little effort, whatever, whatever, right? You hustle your butt off, right? I tell people this all the time. Uh, next month, I would have been a YouTuber for two years. I've been an entrepreneur for only, for over five. The first three years of my journey is not documented on YouTube because I was working my butt off trying to figure stuff out. I still haven't figured everything out, but that was a point in my life where honestly, I was so scared that, okay, what I'm going to do if I don't keep this money coming in? So let me work seven days a week, 14 hour days, say yes to every opportunity, stack up money, right? Was working my guys to death because uh, we had multiple vehicles running right? And just get it like that, right? So uh, I don't believe that for the vast majority of us, there is a, a, a easy, simple way to do something with no money or whatever, unless you have good credit. Of course, if you have good credit, you can go to the bank and get a loan and, and do stuff like that. Appreciate everybody that's in here. If you haven't done so, hit that thumbs up button, right? Teach, teach. Tell me how you started with the van. Did you start from nothing? I bought a van. I applied for a courier service and then I moved on. I wrote a whole book about it. If you don't want to go to Amazon and spend $25 on a book, I have a hundred free videos on this channel that teach you how to do the exact same thing, right? The book is the consolidated guide. It gives you a little bit more details, but there are people and I post their testimonies on my Instagram that will show you uh, that it works, right? It works. So, and, and again, man, I hustled, right? Like I said, uh, I was working a full-time job and I was saving money. And then when the opportunity presented itself, I took advantage of it. You have to crawl before you walk. Mistakes will make you better. Absolutely. Absolutely. But there's a lot of people for whatever reason, they're so afraid to make mistakes, right? They're so afraid to make mistakes. They never want to try anything. Um, let me see. You jumped up on me. Y'all give me one second. See where we left off at. Um, okay, see some networking going on. Oh, got a lot of people in here tonight. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, these videos are better than Gary V's. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. I watch Gary V too. Uh, I'm in the pallet biz. Need to get me a truck, right? Cool. Um, I always tell people start off with Craigslist, or if you have a local dealer in your area that's gonna give you a better rate. Uh, for something like that. I my, Really, you can start wherever you want to. I just encourage you not to start with a new vehicle because new vehicles come with new vehicle payments and high insurance and things of that nature. And I'm all about easing yourself into this business. And then if you really like it, you can definitely scale it up at any point in time. Making money is, is a numbers game. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's something to live by, right? So if you want to make a lot of money, again, man, it's a numbers game. Easiest way to make a million dollars is to ask everybody in the world for a dollar, right? But think about the amount of effort that goes into that. So it's also oxymoronic to say that, that it's like, yo, the easiest way is in a sense, the hardest way to do it. But you got to understand that it's, it's, a, it's a numbers game when you're trying to scale up your business. You might have to expand your customer base, the services you offer, the products you offer and, and things of that nature. Um, let me see. I like your energy, fam. Love the game. As long as you stay available, consistent, and remember the best customer is a repeat customer. Salute, bro. Absolutely. Top of the evening, my brother. What's up, Kevin Dixon? Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, we just chopping it up in the chat real quick. Then I'm going to get out of here, right? 
um, under the hundred folks in the chat. Yeah, appreciate y'all being here. Right, hardest part is just starting something. I know I get stuck on just materializing my my ideas, and don't feel bad about it. Right, you're not alone, Austin Davis. There's a lot of people like that. I know some people right now. Every week they got another great idea on how they're gonna make money, and they've been like this for over a year. They ain't did nothing yet, right? So I still try to encourage them to do it. But, you know, you get to a point where you don't even expect them to do nothing now. At this point, if they did anything, right, if they started selling water on the side of the street, I'll be impressed, right? But you, the, the first step is just identifying to yourself that, you know, this is what I struggle with. And then now you can move forward, right? Because uh, that is a huge step in and of itself. Lots of times people want to blame other people on their success, right? And say, this person did this to me. They didn't teach me that. I got a buddy right now who his excuse for why he can't save money is because his parents never taught him how to save money. This is a 30 something year old man, right? So you got to get to the point where you accept responsibility for your own life, right? So now that you know that this is the problem you have, you can just identify that and move forward with it. Um, luck favors the prepared, right? That, that is one of the few quotes I remember from my sergeant major before I got out of the military, right? Female sergeant major taught us that luck favors the prepared. So if I wasn't saving money working that nine to five job, and honestly, I didn't have a savings goal as far as like the amount of money that I wanted to save or why I was saving the money. I was just saving the money and constantly looking for how can I make money outside of this job, right? And that opportunity finally presented itself and I had the money to take advantage of it. So it just goes back to luck favors the prepared. So even if you don't have a savings goal or you don't know how much money you want to save or why you're saving it, it's never a bad idea just to save money, keep on researching stuff, watch my videos, the videos of others, and then just decide what you want to invest in. And then at that point, you don't got to invest all of your money. If you save up $1,000, you don't got to put in your whole $1,000. Maybe you just put 200 in to try it out. Say, okay, 200 made me 350, right? I like this. Let me put another 200 in or just reinvest that profit in and go from there. And then you can scale up at any point in time. Show your love. Appreciate that. Um, are your classes sold out for the cell phone repair? Um, no, they're not. We have one this weekend, techconnectncllc.com. Uh, I'm going to link it underneath this video as well once we're done, but it's techconnectncllc.com. One is this weekend, and then one is early November. The date uh, slips my mind at this very second, but all of that will be linked underneath this video if you're interested in that. Um Hey, my brother, what's the best way to get in contact with uh, with you? Social media. Uh, I'm on Instagram a lot. Um, luck favors the prepared. Again, yeah, I'm telling you, that's probably something that I'll remember my entire life. And just taking that to heart, right, it, it has opened up a lot of opportunities for me, right? Because I know people that once they get a certain amount of money saved up, they say, okay, man, now I'm about to go on vacation. I'm going to save up for this. I'm going to save up for that. And they never get past that $3,000, $5,000 mark. So that's why I wanted to come at you in this video and just be direct with you. $10,000 is broke, right? To be honest, maybe the people you know don't have $10,000 or you don't have $10,000 yourself. But if you compare that to what money is to people with real money, $10,000 is broke, Twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, right? So by saying that you save up $10,000 is not something to be frowned upon, right? It's not a bad thing to have that, um, but it's also not something that's uh, in, insurmountable, if you will, right? You can save up that amount of money plus more and be good, right? Uh, another thing that I want to share with you guys that I always try to do is set goals that are realistic. However, they're goals that are bigger than uh, what you know as far as accomplishing them, right? I'll give you an example because it'll probably make more sense there. There was a point in time where I said, I want to make $10,000 a month. At that point in time, I had no idea how I was going to make $10,000 a month, right? But I said it, I meant it, and then I started applying myself. I have a stack of books all over my house. I started reading books of people that have made real money doing different things. I started watching other people's YouTube channel. I really just went out looking for information 
on people that were already making five figures or more per month and saying, okay, what did they do to make it? Is that something that interests me? Do I want to give that a shot? Right. Really start applying myself, got to that goal. Now I said, my new goal is I want to make $30,000 a month. I'm not there yet. However, I've already more than passed my first goal. And now I'm setting these goals. I'm encouraging you to do the same, right? Set a goal and don't restrict yourself just based off of what you know how to do, right? So if you know with ease, you can save an extra $100 a month. Don't say your goal is to save $1,200 a year. Say your goal is to save, to save up $10,000 a year, right? And then be serious about it. Work towards it like you really believe that you can get there. Maybe you don't have all the answers now, but guess what? Whatever goal you set, there's a good chance that somebody out there has already reached that goal because there's billionaires in the world. So it's highly unlikely that you can set a goal that has not been reached by somebody in existence before. Right. So that's something that I personally do. And it has worked for me. Let me see where we left off. Would you suggest going through your local SBA? Me personally, I saved up my own money and did it, bro. I'm going to just be honest with you. So uh, I haven't used loans and stuff. I'm getting into real estate now. And this will honestly be my first real time uh, doing business with loans and credit and stuff like that. Right. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. However, I'm not trying to, to give you misleading information by saying go to the SBA versus some other organization. Right. I'm really big on doing your own due diligence. So before I mislead you, I just tell you, I don't know, bro. Just to be honest with you. Very true. Um, all right, cool. Some more networking going up uh, for the gentleman that was interested in the CAD. Shout out to Baltimore. All right. Romania in the building. Raz Queen. Appreciate that. Um, let me see. Good energy. Straight wisdom. Thank you for all you do. Great inspiration. Thank you, Gregory Johnson, for that. North Carolina's in the building. We deep in the building, North Carolina. West Palm Beach, right? What's up, my dude? What's up, Johnny Topside? Gibson, LA in here. Let me see. Pallet business straight, 95% of the pallets you get uh, are free, then resale for a profit. Cool, cool. So good networking. I'm going to scroll down a little bit faster to see if there's any questions. Appreciate everybody that's here, whether you put where you from or comment in the chat or not. I just appreciate y'all being here. Uh, shout out to Rocky Mount. I will be retiring at the age of 30. I'm 25 now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's good that you say stuff like that, Entrepreneur Jones, because uh, I think that lots of people feel like that's impossible unless you come from money, right? Like I said before, I didn't come from money. Uh, we lived in public housing. I lived in the projects, right? And then uh, we lived in trailers, not knocking trailers, but the trailer we lived in wasn't a nice trailer. So if you live in a nice trailer, I know how nice they can be. We ain't lived there. We live in a raggedy trailer, right? So I lived on public housing, uh, food assistance, you name it, we had it growing up, right? But coming from that, and now, like I said, I'm 29, working on things that by the time I'm in my mid-30s, if half the stuff works out, right? I wouldn't need to work as far as like money goes. I'll just do stuff that makes me happy. And, and there's nothing unique about me, right? There's nothing special about me that you can't do. Everything that I learned, somebody taught me either through a book that I bought and read or a course or a YouTube video or something like that. So I didn't go to any secret tomb that you can't go to and learn how to do this job, right? This was all public information. I just went out looking for it and found it and got to this point. Um, East Oakland, California. I was always sharing content. Appreciate that, Pastor Jack. Let me see. Love your platform, JT. Trying to get my adult kids to take this step. They grew up in, uh, in my small business, so they know it can be done. It's about self-empowerment 100%. 100%. Blessed to have found your channel. Appreciate you, Raz Queen, for that. Appreciate all the game approved for two vans trying to get started out here in Houston. Shout out to you, Kevin Brown, man. How happy and pleased are people with their lives is what counts. 100%. I know lots of times we just focus on how much money somebody has, but happiness is key too. You can make a lot of money and be miserable. I know people that make a lot of money working a job, but they're not happy because they never get to spend time with their, their spouse 
or their kids and they're always stressed out about stuff. So yeah, they got money, but they're not happy. Right. And now they're to the point where they're actually considering taking a pay cut in order to do something that will give them more time so that they can be happy. Right. So that might sound impossible to somebody that's not making uh, 170 plus dollars a year right now. But there's people I know that's making that much money and saying, man, I'm thinking about coming on back down to the Carolinas, making 60, 70 thousand dollars and just being with my family, man, living a good life. They got a nice chunk of change saved up now. They might buy a couple of rental properties and just ride it out like that. Appreciate you, Linda Harris, for the super chat. Does mean a lot to me. Uh, I, I don't take it for granted. Um, so appreciate you, Linda Harris, for the super chat, for showing your support to the channel. Um, let me see. What is your advice for someone trying to be a courier, right? You can get the book right here, right? Go to Amazon.com. Type in JT Hustles. That's the consolidated guide. If you don't have the money, that's fine. I didn't always have the money to do everything I wanted to do. That's why I made over 100 free YouTube videos on this channel. There's actually a playlist that's discussing the courier video. So if you have the time, like I said earlier in this video, the worst thing you can be is broke and don't have time. So if you can get the book, get the book. It'll save you some time. If you can't get the book, watch the playlist of courier videos. I go over everything from how to get routes inspect the van. Can you do it with a DUI, right? All the common stuff to help you get started. And again, I want you guys to understand that when it comes to the courier business, my courier business is small by most people's definition of small, right? You can do way more than what I'm doing. So the content that I make is just to show you how to get started, right? Six figures in the transportation industry is not hard to come by. There are truck drivers that work a job and make six figures. So to make a business in the transportation industry that makes six figures is not something that's astronomical or something that is unheard of because there's employees that make that much with medium sized companies. Right. So my whole content is just introducing you to it, showing you how to get started with it. And then it's up to you if you want to take it in whatever direction you want to take it in. Me personally, I like to diversify. I like to make money doing that online. Uh, getting into real estate now, fish breeding, all this other stuff, uh, because that's just my motto and the, the plan that I want to have to set up my future generations where we're always hedging our investments. So if something happens right here, it don't hurt us because we're making money so many other ways. Like my daughter will always be taken care of and the people that come after her will always be taken care of. So uh, if you want to get into the courier business or the transportation business at all, right, just know that it's 100 percent possible and six figures it is not even anything to brag about. You can ask any truck driver that goes over the road that, you know, what I mean, you can make six figures as an employee. So when I tell you guys you can make six figures as, with an independent courier service, your own business, definitely possible. And I outlined that in my book. Um, appreciate all your advice and guidance. Appreciate you. Let me see. Um, I have a home care company. I am a consultant that helps folks start their business. So shout out to Denise Hicks. Again, anybody out there that wants to network, there's, there's always entrepreneurs, business people on this channel. Feel free to go ahead and network with whoever you like in the live chat. I'll jump over that. Um, some are scared, but got to do it anyway. 100%. Right? 100%. Um, hey JT, I can decide between the cell phone business and the appliance repair. Is it possible to do both? And which would you start first and why? Right, you can definitely do both. And again, it depends on your interest level, right? Like you can do either business anywhere in the world, right? Anywhere that there's a cell phone, there's opportunities for you to make money in cell phone repair. Anywhere there's appliances, which is pretty much every house. Most businesses have at least one appliance, right? If it's nothing but a refrigerator, right? So there's opportunities everywhere. It really just depends on your interest. So again, there is no, you know, this one is best over this one because of that. I really think that again, finding the value in your interest will make you six figures. I think oftentimes people try to make it sound super complicated and you got to do it their way. But if you boil it down to the nitty gritty, right? What are your interests? Right. There's a good chance that if something interests you, whatever value you find in that 
which makes it an interest to you, there's a market of other people that can relate to that in some manner or another. So you transfer that into a business and then you market that and show them that value, right? Um, see somebody asking if I had 5K or 10K, what would I do? Uh, well, when I when that's all I had, I bought a cargo van and a box truck and I started a courier service. I literally uh, started with 15 grand that I just saved up working a job. So I, I bought a cargo van, I bought a box truck. And like I said, seven days straight, 14 hours a day, uh, ran up six figures my first year. But again, you got to think about the kind of wear and tear we putting on vehicles and the kind of hours I'm putting on myself and my crew, who is a three person team. Right. So, yeah, we made great money. But right. Even beyond just the money, it was a lot that we put in to get to that level. And again, I, I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm just telling you guys, that's what I did, mostly out of fear because I was a new entrepreneur. Nobody could really teach me about the independent courier business because when I started five years ago, there wasn't a YouTuber like me telling you this is how you do it, giving you a consolidated book on how to do it. So you went out there and you figured it out and you sunk or swim five years ago, right? They might they might have been a person here or there that said, I'm making all this money doing this. If you want to know, come to my seminar, come to my website, whatever the case may be. But there was nobody nowhere near the level that I am now with free video after free video in and out of the van. So that's how I started. And, and it took me a while to understand that, okay, you don't got to be so money hungry and scared that money is going to come in when you really are offering value, right? So that's what really got me. Once I understood that, hey, what I'm doing is offering value. The transportation industry is not going anywhere. I'm providing a real service to B2B businesses. I'm taking stuff from one business to another business. I was taking pharmaceuticals, right? So in order for me to not have work, then the whole pharmaceutical industry will have to go away at that point in time, or the mail industry will have to collapse. The government is not going to let either one of them collapse. So once I understood that, okay, I'm providing real value here. I don't have to work weekends. There's still going to be stuff that needs to get moved on Monday, right? So, and then that's when I started to develop as an entrepreneur and learn, you know, a, a better approach without sacrificing uh, my time for money because that's the job mentality, right? So I jumped out into it. I still had a job mentality, bringing it uh, to a business and thinking that I got to do all of the work myself. I got to put all these hours in because hours equal money and killing myself, really. Just killing myself, investing yourself, right? Appreciate you dropping that link, Miss Curly Girl Murray. Um, let me see. Do you need to have a physical shop to do the cell phone repair? Nope. Uh, shout out to Tech Connect NC Ontario in the house. October the 12th, seating is limited. So this weekend, um, if you can make it out this weekend, literally go to techconnectncllc.com. And you can come as soon as this weekend. If you miss this weekend, then there's one more left in the year. And then the prices will go up, right? Prices are going to go up next year. Um, and we've been telling people this all year long. So it's no surprise to most of you guys. But for the benefit of the people that didn't know that, I encourage every like-minded person to start a business. If while working, inflation will hurt you if you only have one source of income in the months to come. 100%. That's why I encourage everybody right, to, to do at least two things. So I understand now that everybody's not going to quit their job, no matter what somebody says, me or anybody else, right? That's just what they like doing. And there's nothing wrong with that. However, do your job and something else. It doesn't really have to be active income. It could be something passive. Maybe you want to invest in rental properties or something like that, right? Um, so whatever it is that matches your interest, I still want to highly encourage you all to do at least two things, right? So have at least two sources of income in at all times. Shout out to Dallas, right? Hi from Romania. All right, cool. Got two people here from Romania. Appreciate you being here. So true. Find what you like to do and spark will give you energy to get going. Absolutely, right? Um, So I became an independent courier because I was the type of person that just liked to drive regardless. So even when I wasn't getting paid for it, 
I was just driving around, just passing time, listening to music, talking on the phone, or whatever. I just like to ride. So uh, driving was an interest of mine, right? So definitely being an independent courier was something that came naturally to me. I was even considering becoming a truck driver, but fortunately enough, one of my mentors, who also is my uncle, was like, man, don't get into trucking, right? There, you do better going over here. And he didn't even really know what an independent courier was. And at one point in time, he thought it was a scam, but he definitely was like, yeah, you'll probably make the same money, if not more, right? Just doing something else uh, other than being a truck driver at that point in time. And he was right about it, right? Compared to the company I was going to go with, I was going, I ain't going to say the name of the company, but I was going to go with a well-known company and come to find out there was only paying drivers $500 a week, right? And, And I made more than that my first month in business, just figuring it out. Right. Uh, thank you all for showing love. Right. Appreciate all the moderators look like, uh, you know, I see a lot of stuff being deleted. I don't know what it was, but, uh, that just tells me that the moderators are doing their job. So appreciate all the moderators in the house, man, for showing love and, and trying to keep this environment, uh, as pure as possible. I'm, I'm just trying to motivate and inspire people to do something positive. So appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, hitting that thumbs up button that tells YouTube that this kind of content should be seen more by people. So I know I don't have the most entertaining videos with supermodels and mansions and and cars and stuff like that. But uh, this is just real practical entrepreneurship from a guy that's no better than you, no smarter than you. There's, you know, nothing so good about me. That means that, that you can't implement and have the same success that I've had and more, right? You're not even limited by what I uh, was able to accomplish. So hitting that like button does help. Sharing this video does help. Can you do this in Canada? Absolutely, right? They need freight moved around. They have appliances in Canada. They have cell phones in Canada. So no matter what you're asking about, man, yes, you can do this in Canada. I've seen some people from Romania, wherever you're watching this from in the United States, out of the United States. If Freight needs to get moved from point A to point B, which is true pretty much anywhere, right? Stuff has to get to stores, people's houses, whatever the case may be, right? So if freight needs to get moved, if people have uh, cell devices, mobile devices, cell phones, or appliances, then the stuff that I talk about on this channel is 100% practical to you. You can take it, go apply it, make money with it, and go on beyond that. We've actually had people... Uh, that give testimonies on this YouTube channel and on that Instagram, watch the free videos, go out and make money, right? So it ain't always got to be, you got to come here, you got to come to a course, you got to buy a book. Like we do both here. So free game, courses, however you want it, right? Of course, the the paid stuff, we're going to go more in detail. We're going to get more personalized with you. However, there are people that can take the free game and make money and it's proof on this channel. It's proof in the pudding. Um, Started a moving service with no money. Hustled and bought a truck. Now I have two offices here in Dallas. 25K monthly. Work that hustle muscle. Absolutely, man. Appreciate you for sharing that ready, set, wealth, man. Just letting people know. Because, again, I I think, uh, and I don't mean this in a malicious way, and I don't think necessarily that people were uh, out here trying to to do this. Maybe they were. But so many people were were putting out content on do real estate with no money down, start this business with no money, right? And of course, on the the top level, if you got credit or if you got somebody else who's willing to give you money or their credit, then yes, you can do it. But for the vast majority of people, we got to hustle, right? If you don't got good credit, you don't know nobody that's going to let you use their credit or give you their money, you got to hustle. And don't feel bad about having to hustle because you're seeing people out here saying, They did it with no money. Some of them are lying, right? I don't know all the people, so maybe some of them have done it without money, but I'm 100% sure some of them lying. A lot of them had to do it like how I did, and most all the entrepreneurs I know, I can't really think of any of them, honestly, that haven't had to hustle, do whatever side hustle, job, whatever they were doing before this to get their money up and then get into it. They didn't have to have a lot of money, but they hustled up some money and then jumped into this game and got it. Can you make $100,000 with third-party uh, courier companies or no, right? With multiple vehicles, you can. 
uh, you're going to run into a dilemma that lots of times or the dilemma that I ran into. Uh, these third party warranty companies, if you start to build out your entire fleet for them, uh, they see it as a vulnerability most times because if they ever upset you. Right. So if they upset Mr. James Potts and he wants to leave and take all of his vans with him. You could cripple the company if you have a fleet of 17 vehicles all running for JT Hustle's third party courier company. So lots of times they're going to limit the amount of vehicles that you could put with them just as a safety precaution for them. But it's also mutually beneficial for you, too, because you can get in a situation where you're walking on eggshells and you don't want to do anything so that they take all the contracts from you. And now you don't have any money. So I say with multiple vehicles, I have done it. And I know people that are doing it. But as you begin to scale, then you'll want to diversify. Say, OK, I might do some third party work, some direct work. Uh, just And that's when you got to get into marketing and more advanced stuff like that. So that's why I recommend people don't get into that until maybe their second year. So that way you can dedicate that whole first year into just learning the business, saying if I like this or not, right? And then you can go on beyond that. What's the best lane to choose for only eleven? For only eleven to invest, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, would you ever buy a franchise? Right? Definitely, definitely. I've seen what Mike was able to do with uh, mattress by appointments franchise that he talks about several times um, on his channel, on my channel, and other places. And uh, they made they made real money. They made real money doing it, right? So uh, I definitely have a couple of franchises in the in the back of my head that I want to get into, um, but I still got to do more research on them. I want to invest in a well known franchise, but one of the benefits of a franchise that I like from listening to other people that have franchise empires, as they term them, is that your ability to make money from people who may not ordinarily choose to do business with you for one reason or another. So if you invest in that franchise, you still provide them a similar value, but now you have the benefit of they think that they're buying from McDonald's and not you or whatever the case may be. So I do think that at one point in time, I definitely will possibly invest in a franchise. All right. So Cool, cool. Look like more networking going on, so I'm gonna jump around. Um, let me see. Is there a job that allows you to do a variety of things? Um, I don't really know if there's a job per se, so I don't know. But I think that's more networking going on anyway. Um, so yeah, definitely people are in the chat talking about their businesses and getting advice on money to invest. So uh, I think that's, let me see. Cool. So that looks like that's pretty much what's going on uh, in the chat right now. So appreciate you guys' time. Again, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, share with anybody you think it can help. And until next time, to all my hustlers stay hustling. JT Hustles, I'm gone.